Veteran journalist and political analyst Karima Brown has been laid to rest in a private Islamic rights ceremony in Johannesburg. Our colleague and the host of The Fix succumbed to COVID-19 related complications this morning. Our senior reporter Avi Mtila is at the funeral. Let's cross to him now for the latest. Avi, we're um, not an easy story to cover. Uh, this is someone we knew well. This is someone who was a driving force uh, in our newsroom. Um, you have witnessed the funeral. I understand it has wrapped up now. Just tell us a little bit more about the proceedings to lay Karima to rest. Sally, it was hard to hold back the tears hearing the description of uh, Karima Brown, how fearless she was, uh, the courageous journalist that she was, asking those probing questions, no matter what the circumstances or the backlash that she'd received. Um, a drove of her friends and family came out to West Park Cemetery just to bid her a farewell. And I tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in sight as those um, farewells were coming through, even individuals insisting to come through to where she lies at this very moment, Karima Brown, coming to bid her farewell personally, even after uh, the funeral itself. I mean, we've been speaking to droves of uh, seasoned journalists who were quite close to Karima Brown, just detailing how she was, the person that she was, not only on the field, but outside the field. I wanted to listen to Eusebius Makeza, just detailing their friendship and just the person that Karima was. Karima was energy. She was vivacious. We co our friendship is one that coalesced around getting together with friends, always debating, always arguing. Food was a big deal in Karima's life and in mine. Uh, that's the Karima as a friend. As a journalist, I would list three things, and I'll unpack them on another occasion. The first is she was deeply committed to truth and evidence. And in an era of disinformation, a commitment to evidence is important. Karima would pour over documents, study them in detail. So that was the first one. The second thing for me when I think about her legacy is accountability. We all say accountability, but we're not all equally good at accountability. All the ENCA viewers of The Fix know that accountability was central to her interview technique. And even if she knew a comrade from her past life in the anti-apartheid struggle, she may be friendly with you on WhatsApp, but as soon as you come on her platform, she will hold you accountable. And that accountability part of the legacy is important. So that was Eusebius Mackayser there. So Aviwa, as you say, um, many well-known uh, media people um, have been paying tribute to her. Uh, but as Eusebius says, he also was a very close friend. And you've spoken uh, to a colleague of ours, Faith Daniels, who was extremely close uh, to Karima. And of course, Faith uh, pretty much runs our newsroom in terms of the assignments and organizing our reporters. Uh, she was there as well today. Tell us more. She certainly was teary-eyed Faith Daniels as well. Um, even Ronnie Carroll, say, if I might mention, saying that he could not stay at home um, while Karima was there, one of the few people that took their time um, to go to a uh, book launch that Ronnie Carroll sir, had. But as you mentioned, Faith Daniels, our national assignments editor, um, is one of the people that I've been speaking to throughout the day. A close relationship, Sally, that we saw ourselves in the newsroom, a very um, close relationship where um, they'd always be together whenever Karima was around, Faith would be right by Karima's side. But she went into detail just on the nature of the relationship, how personal it was, um, calls on a daily basis, even describing now that uh, Karima was in the hospital in ICU uh, for a long period, how she missed that um, closeness, those calls, checking up even on Faith's son, how Faith's son was doing, a really close relationship that I want you to listen to in Faith Daniel's um, uh, words. Today, I choose to celebrate her life and to celebrate our friendship. We all know what, a, what, what kind of a journalist Karima was and what a hard worker she was. And people either loved her or loved to hate her. But as a friend, I choose to remember her today to celebrate her life and to remember what kind of a friend she was, to remember the soft side of Karima, the immense empathy that she's always had and concern for people that she loved and who were around her. The concern that she had and shared about my son when he was sick, about me. The concerns that she had about my safety, his safety during COVID. And never once did she 
uh, concern for herself because that was the person that Karima was, uh, the type of friend that Karima was. When you were close to her and you were in her circle of, of trust and a circle of friends, she guarded that fiercely. And I think what I would, what I will uh, miss the most about Karima is the early morning calls, the late night calls to discuss the day. Doesn't matter whether it was current affairs or not, just our day. The check-ins to say, babe, are you okay? You know? And that for me, will, it will leave like a gaping wound and it will leave a tremendous hole in my life because I choose to remember her like that. A beautiful tribute there uh, from Faith Daniels and Aviwe, of course, this has hit us hard as a community of journalists and our viewers, of course, will remember Karima as well. But against the broader context uh, of 50,000 people who we have lost to this virus and, and the tragic irony and the sadness is that Karima was such an advocate for being careful around COVID. We know that she was extraordinarily careful. I remember her wearing gloves in the newsroom, being so careful about social distancing. And uh, unfortunately, we understand that she had to take a business flight and that possibly uh, is when she contracted the virus. Um, but in terms of her legacy at this time, uh, what have people been saying to you about how we must remember Karima and what she stood for in terms of good journalism. You know, Sally, that was one of the issues that was brought up here, the earlier issue that you touched on that. It's so ironic that she passed away because of COVID-19 after being relentless and even calling out people uh, that were not wearing masks, people that were erring when it came to holding up the regulations of COVID-19. So that in itself speaks to how extra careful we need to be and in fact signifies how the pandemic, how ruthless the COVID-19 pandemic. But in terms of her legacy, Sally, it is that fearless journalist that she was, that she'll be remembered for asking those probing questions, no matter who was on the receiving end, um, just being determined and even um, grooming reporters and telling reporters that they shouldn't just take what the interviewee is saying for granted, but go on and do further investigation and their own research to give um, the viewer a full picture, essentially, of what the, the truth is. You'd hear it on time and again, uh, a show is called The Fix, take, detailing how she was um, one of the people at the forefront trying to fix some of the issues that the country uh, is, is on, still ongoing, being faced with on a daily basis. But a courageous and a fearless journalist that never shied away from asking the pointed and difficult questions is what Karima Brown will definitely be remembered for. Oh, thank you so much, Avi Wemchila, who's at the West Park Cemetery. And for covering such a very difficult story uh, with such grace. Thank you, Avi. Where, of course, uh, Karima Brown succumbed to COVID-19 earlier today, and she was laid to rest uh, about an hour ago. And of course